Welcome to Sandbanks, a playground of the rich and famous and one of the most expensive places to live in the UK. And what a beautiful sight it is here on the beach on this sunny October afternoon. I've been told by people that watch the channel and people that live in the area that just a few miles from the ultra wealth of Sandbank, just down the road in Bournemouth, there are pockets of deprivation and homelessness which really do contrast from the wealth and the lifestyle here on Sandbanks. So as much as I would like to spend the day sunning myself on this beautiful beach, I'm going to jump in the car, we're going to head a couple of miles down the road and we're going to see what life is really like for the people that are struggling in Bournemouth. Let's see the contrast between the rich and the poor just a few miles from each other on the south coast. Let's go. I think a good solid rule, you can tell by how salubrious a place is, by how expensive the parking is, how much they think they can get away with for one hour's parking. Here at Sandbanks, pay and display, £2.80. What a rip-off, probably the most expensive parking I've seen on my travels around the UK yet. Do you think Harry Redknapp, one of the famous residents of Sandbanks, do you think he can afford 280 for his parking just to pop down and get his coffee by the beach? Wow. Admiral's Court. Brutalism right next to natural beauty. The beauty and the beast. So I'm just on the beach here, Bournemouth, the main beach here, right next to the pier, filming some B-roll. And then I've noticed these tents that are just under the pier. And there's a chap here, so I'm gonna go and see if he is sleeping rough under the pier, or if it's just um, where he hangs out for the day. Well, I've been sleeping here for since about the air show, so like six weeks, but I've been homeless since the week before COVID. Hit. Okay. I was uh, assistant manager at Pizza Express in Banstead in Surrey. Uh, just moved into a new flat and um, my mum bought a fridge freezer. I hadn't got house insurance yet. And woke up at four o'clock in the morning and the whole place is on, on fire. Jeez. What, like Grenfell? Like uh, exactly like, the same story. Yeah, yeah. like Grenfell, yeah. And um, so they did an arson investigation report, found out it was a short circuit in the fridge freezer. And ever since then I've been getting put in weird places like temporary accommodation and supported accommodation. Yeah. But most of these people that are homeless at the moment, most of them have like mental health issues or drug or drug issues. And I keep getting housed with people who are like hearing voices and all this other stuff. Not to say that you know I have any issue with that, but I'm quite sane and I don't I do a lot of, I don't do a lot of drugs. I smoke my weed and shit like that, but yeah. that's about it. And so yeah, I came down here because I was I was basically under like a lot of um, intimidation from gangs and like stuff in London in like Croydon area yeah. so I was like you know what I'm not dealing with this kind of stuff anymore so I just come down here I've been down here about six weeks but I've been working with half time and a couple of other places and they're gonna put me in a normal like a normal house with yeah. like normal people yeah so I should be housed within the next three weeks so but, you, but you've been sleeping here on the beach for six I've weeks been sleeping here for six and weeks. why did you choose this spot because it's it's away from the town center um, I like the beach um, my son lives in California I spent 10 years in California you've got a bit of an accent now yeah. as soon as you said California it yeah, came I out yeah I lived there for, well I lived in America 16 years when I was 17 then came back with 33 I'm 43 now and mm. yeah the, the the plan is to you know get get housed get grounded get a base here and then go back to see my son and establish like communication with my ex-wife and stuff like that. I don't blame anybody else for my situation, you know, I probably, if I'd have managed myself a little different or, you know, had, had a closer relationship with my family, but that's all, you know, water under the bridge. I'm 43 years old and I don't want to like be a burden. I don't want, I don't want to, and a lot of these places that you, you get these supported and sheltered and temporary accommodation, you, the housing benefit goes straight to them. Then they also pay a service charge. So it's like they're double dipping on on people who are in a less in a more vulnerable yeah. position, so yeah. I'd rather not take the government's money and live out here, and not have to answer to, you know, certain rules and regs. So how are you surviving if you're um, not taking the government's money? Like well, people giving you donations uh, and stuff? And uh, no, I, I got a, a hit and run case. Jeez, uh, oh, man. Yeah, I get I get money. Yeah. Basically, I got uh, my car. I've got shifted there. I've got a 
titanium rod down my tibia and my fibula. I've got two plates in each ankle. Yeah. So I get a bit of money. Do the authorities move you on? Um, obviously, like I've you're noticed, right here in the middle of. All yeah, this, I have. So. Well, I have noticed they have moved a few other people along, and they haven't moved me along because, from what they, from what I understand, it has to be like from the king to get you off the beach. Oh, really? This is actually considered anything past the concrete is the king's land. Is that a little loophole? It's a little loophole. So the king's got to come down here himself well, and he kick has you to, off. No, he, <laughs> basically he has to he has to stamp and authorize it, write a letter that day, and it has to be delivered delivered that day. Wow. And I heard I learned that from one of the OG Big Issue guys, uh, yeah. Carl in town, and he was he used to be on the street like 20 years ago. So because they did move me along from there, but then you know because I'm not really a, a threat or. Yeah. or anything like that plus yeah. I love the beach so I yeah. can be quite clean like yeah you know, see, it is clean yeah no, you got no your track. own washing up station yeah and then yeah. I just I take it up there the yeah little thing up there but you know I do I do use a lot of the, of the services there are like um, Lansdowne Church in touch they do they do like lunches and food today you got we are humans from Boscombe they come up and do food at Boots so it's like you can always get food I've got I've even got well I'm, it's a bit of a mess but I'll show you. yeah sure I appreciate it man it is a bit of a mess, but like, it was pretty cold last night, I won't lie. Yeah, you're just getting to that time of year now where, I mean, we've, we've had a bit of an Indian summer, haven't we, as well, yeah. so you've been all right. But... And we had the heat wave a little yeah. bit, but I mean, you know, I've got loads of food. Yeah. Oh, you've got a right you know? setup, yeah. And then here's like, my medical paperwork, and I'm getting my yeah. passport back again. Yeah. But, you know, I've got my little suitcase back there. I did have a camping stove, but then someone nicked it. Oh shit. That's, so, that's, that's the one like drawback. Is that like the middle of the night? Like somebody will come yeah. and just like take it while you're asleep? Yeah, like Mohammed had, had got some, some clothes and a tent dropped off to him. So I grabbed the tent and put it over here because people, they're going to opportunists, man, you know? Yeah. Especially in like I've noticed, you know, people who, who have a bit of a drug habit, let's say like a heavy drug habit, yeah. you know, that if it's not nailed down and it's worth some money, then they'll go, they'll take it. I've got my yoga mat, you know, I've got little hang pros and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. It's nothing major, but... And shelter, I've just noticed if it, if it pisses it down, yeah. you've got shelter in yeah, there. This, this, this here is probably, he's probably the best part. Yeah. Because he's a bit further away, like, it does come, it does, the weather does come, like, rushing in this way. Yeah. So, I mean, let's see, I hung this up last night. Yeah. Look, like that's dry already. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I said, it's not ideal for a lot of people. I mean, I, I know a lot of people that wouldn't be able to live like this. Yeah. You know, if I've got that, then I've got one, a waterproof cover there. This is a tarp from, that was a tarp from another tent that someone left. I wouldn't recommend it, you know, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know how to live any other life but my life. So it's like, I wouldn't tell, I mean, I can always recommend and give advice, but at the end of the day, it's your life and how you want to live. I don't want to live on the beach. I mean, shit, I wake up, I got to scratch my head. There's yeah. like sand everywhere. You get sand and fucking everything. Yeah, you man. never <laughs> ever feel clean. <laughs> but you know, I, like I said, I go to take showers, you know. If, I, if it comes down to it, I'll have a dip in the ocean. Go over there, there's a cold shower. It'll wake yeah. you. It does, definitely wakes you up. Yeah. But like I said, you know, even in the winter time, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not scared of being outside in the winter. I've been out, I've been out let's see, three years now. This has been my fourth, yeah, my fourth Christmas on the street. Like, you know, like people say, you can laugh or you can cry. And I'm like, well, you, you can laugh and cry, man, because sometimes it's, that's how it is. You know, life is great. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's a pain in the ass at the same time. But I'm all right, man. Yeah, so, I'm fine. Yeah, I appreciate that, though. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, what's your, I never caught your name. Leighton. Leighton, Leighton. Thomas. Yep. Yeah, Wendell. Nice Wendell. to meet you, man. Nice to yeah, meet you, man. Nice to meet you, man. Breathing the air, enjoying the sea. I mean, yeah. Look at all these people having fun, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not fucking about. These people are enjoying themselves. They are, yeah. Look at the families. Look yeah. at the good weather. Natural beauty. Like, we're all far more similar than we're made to understand. Like, and people these days, like, yeah. they're only a couple of bad paychecks away from, oh, from this situation. It can be difficult. But I can tell you're trying to put a positive slant on your yeah, situation I'm not talking a, I'm, to me. Trust me, I'm not putting a brave face on anything. I just said it how it is, really. I know, I, I know it's hard. You know? Yeah. But, like I said, you know, I'm not hurting anyone. No. You know, I'm not for the most part hurting myself at all you know it's just a bit a bit sandy like I said <laughs> I'll tell you what sand gets in fucking everything yeah. but no I want people to just know like you know we're not out, like a lot of people who are out here that I've met they're not out here because they choose to be they're out here because you know that like I said they're cracked out on the heroin or on the, whatever it might be they drink too much you know and you know it's just it's sad man because I've, I've seen a lot of people pass in the last few years I'm not here to make Bournemouth a bad place. I think the place is lovely. They actually have barbecue 
grills right there. Okay. Flat top what? Grills. Uh, public municipal yeah. barbecue grills. I actually, haven't seen them since I was in Australia. Yeah, and you could use them. So we used to, when I first got down here, because we were short on money, me and a friend of mine, not really a friend, just a, another homeless guy basically. We got sausages and peppers and onions and we made Philly cheesesteaks. Okay. And we did like a Subway thing. I love, so a, Phil I, I love yeah, a Philly cheesesteak, man. And I love to cook. So I there are better like, ones than Subway. <laughs> yeah, but I sold like six inches for a fiver and like a... Really? Yeah, yeah. Like the whole thing with People the tiger, came up. tiger baguettes. And so you're a good things. cook? Yeah, bro. Yeah. This is just another day, mate. Yeah. Life goes on, isn't it? So we've all got to survive. Nice one, bro. Instead of injecting bloody pot. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's an individual, but they should all gather together to realise that there's a bigger fucking picture out there. What were you saying? Like? I've got to introduce you to the, the OG of the, the OG homeless king right here. Okay. This is Carl. That that mobility scooter he's on. Yeah. A couple bought it for him. There's me and Prince. Richard. Yeah, he just told me, yeah. And that's Gaza, and that's he Stephen Bartlett, and that's Princess Charlotte. Wow. And that's me. Well, I was sat here yeah. selling a big issue when someone told me that Prince William's about to turn up over there in prep manager. So I decided to go and walk on over. And as I got to the door, Paul Gascoigne was standing there with me. Yeah. And uh, the Prince walked up. Yeah. So I said, I've got an appointment to see you. I've got a royal appointment. I'll do the big issue. He said, bring him in, bring him in. That's Mr. Gascoigne. Yeah. And then there's Mr. Bartlett on the back yeah and, <laughs> and, 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 Princess Charlotte. and a big picture of you yeah that's a picture of me stood over there it's got my story of why I do the big issue if you read it it said I can hardly walk properly I am waiting to get my pip because I'm gonna then get a disability scooter yeah right somebody read this this come out last Monday at 10 10 o'clock in the morning I started 20 past 10 an old man and old woman come and bought this magazine off me half an hour later can I take you for coffee, Cole? Yeah. Took me to the mobility shop up the road there, Bridges. Yeah. £2,199 they paid for it. Wow. And this is like, like kind of like where a lot of the crackers hang out. Okay. Because there's a lot of crack dealing buildings like right around here. Yeah. So, and then the problem with like that is, from what I realize is, a lot of people who get on crack, they ended up needing something to come down. So people say, but then that's why they do the heroin, to yeah. bring them down. Yeah. But then they get physically and biologically addicted to the heroin. Yeah. So you're living out of a tent yeah. down on Westcliff? Yeah, I must have been the only working homeless person in Bournemouth probably. Yeah. Three months in a tent working in Sandbanks, the fourth richest area in the world. Decorating, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decorating the houses of Sandbanks yeah. but living out of a tent yeah. just down the road. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. just shows the juxtaposition in this country, doesn't it? Mm. I did try, but then a few wild nights here and there. Missed a few mornings, lost my job. Yeah. I've been recommended or maybe warned against going to Boscombe, which is apparently the roughest part of Bournemouth. So I'm going to go there, keep my uh, camera a little bit more subtle on myself and see what Boscombe's like. Yeah, do I, is it safe for me to go into Boscombe with this camera? Your laugh says it all. You should be alright for, for a while. Just don't outstay my welcome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's a bit it's all like Boss Vegas, you know, isn't it? What's Boscombe like? A few words. <laughs> <laughs> nice words or real words? Whatever, real. Shit -o. Absolute At utter full shit -o. Of Okay. Yeah, Is it safe for me to walk in with my camera? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's Maybe. not so sure. I feel Maybe. like listening to this one. I, I wouldn't go anywhere past eight with that. So I've just walked for two miles or so, but it is from Bournemouth Pier in the distance up to Boscombe Pier and it's certainly a very different spectacle this concrete utilitarian structure it's quite foreboding it's not very welcoming and I hope it's not a sinister welcome to the town of Boscombe which is basically a part of Bournemouth now but also kind of seen as its own place so I'm going to walk up into Boscombe now and see if it really is as rough an area as the people in Bournemouth told me flash restaurants beautiful beach people having fun on the beach but apparently an infamous rough neighborhood just up ahead look at this architecture it's um it's almost like spanish colonial architecture but i've got a feeling that maybe at this crossroads here it all starts to go a bit awry So welcome to Boscombe folks, this is the infamous 
rough neighbourhood of Bournemouth that I've been warned about. Let's see what it's like wandering around the town centre. The first thing I'll say is that the meat market is a sign of a good old traditional place in the UK. The butcher here selling his meat on the high street. I haven't seen that since I was in the Midlands. Yeah, big trays of lamb chops. How are you, mate? Yes, sorry, mate. Yeah, I'm just uh, cruising around Boscombe, showing it to the people on YouTube. Oh, thank you, mate. And I haven't seen a meat market since I was back in the Midlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. quite meat. in the Midlands, isn't it? These are a dying breed. Yeah, yeah. Course, yeah mate. Are you here every day? Or? Every Saturday. Yeah. Every Saturday, mate. I'll do one of them and the last one of them. I'll do the two for Thursday. There is nothing that I would do. Just been in Boscombe for a couple of minutes. Obviously, it's quite rough around the edges, but it reminds me a lot of some of the towns in the Midlands. So I quite like it. A lot of character, street markets. I'll be honest with you, folks. Boscombe might be a bit rough, but there are far less boarded-up shops than there are in many seaside towns that are generally considered to be far more upmarket than this. So what's life like in Boscombe? People have told me it's a really rough area, but I kind of like it. To be honest, mate, it is a rough area because of all the drug addicts and crackheads who are all across the streets and that, do you know what I mean? Street corners causing shit and that, do you know what I mean? And it's not nice for children to be around like okay. this lot, Yeah. you see? Yeah. Well, why do we need to be brought up in a livelihood like this yeah. at the end of the day? I will say that I do this all around the UK and, it's and there's, there's less boarded up shops it's, than it's many it, other yeah, places. Yeah, it's everywhere. Do you know what? You get all that stuff around. Exactly. Every, I've lived here, there and everywhere. Do you know what I mean? You get it. Oh, I love Boscombe. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I think it's cracking. There's good people, there's bad people, but everywhere you go, like you say, if you've been places, I bet you see it. You get yeah. good, nice people come along. Of course. People that I think, do you know something? I'll stay away from you. Yeah. Do you know, you know your own crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think from being here just about an hour, there's a good sense of community. Yes. There's a lot there of is. small businesses, which is always a great sign. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, th I don't think it's as bad as people have told me in Bournemouth. Not they do stuff. need to bring the patrols out more onto the streets, okay. you know what I mean, to make it a bit more lively. Sorry, yeah. What were you saying, mate? Bournemouth? No, Bournemouth's worth. Have you been around Bournemouth? Yeah, I've been all around Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah. no, that's even just looks a state, doesn't it? Bournemouth is quite clearly different to some of the smaller seaside towns that I've visited recently. It's a much larger conurbation, so along with the infrastructure, which is a lot larger, it also has a lot of big town, big city problems that come with it. The homeless problem is larger. It also seems a little bit more aggressive on the streets. Wandering around with Leighton, I can feel that there's a little bit of um, like an edge on the streets, although I've met some really kind and welcoming people. But it's also a really beautiful place, and it's, it's so sad to see the division in society again in this much larger seaside town. Andy, right, nice Paul. to meet you. Nice How to you meet doing? you too. Yeah. Guys, can we sort Seth out? He's not been through yet. We've been serving the people since the first week of the scamdemic. I can't call it a pandemic because it You're was You're welcome to say whatever you want, yeah. Um, so at that time, they could put the homeless into B&Bs, hotels, stuff like that, with no facilities for washing the clothes, getting clothes, no way of cooking for themselves. All the shops were shut. They couldn't even go out shoplifting a sandwich, you know what I mean? And then they put them into these hotels, and actually we we treat prisoners and animals better than we treat our, our human beings. I was homeless myself when I landed here. Um, I used my first bed set I got I used to go to the Asda's, I'd buy the reduced veg, the reduced bread, I'd take her home to my bed set, I'd get my big pan out, I'd make a soup and I'd come out and feed the homeless on a night. But I've got a bit more complex than what I do. We do hot meals, we do clothing, toiletries and the pandemic really made me see things in a different light though. It wasn't just the homeless that needed our support. It was the whole community and in January this year we acquired a shop up in Boscombe a nice cafe base split across two floors instantly we, we got that to cook for the homeless um, but having that place 
made me spread that net wide. It's about the humanity with us. We, we do not allow religion to be practised. We're very different from a lot of soup kitchens. We're not, we're not in cahoots with any religion. It is literally about hu humanity. Yeah. Basic. As it says in the name. Yeah. yeah. Basic humanity, quite yeah. simple. And treating people with dignity and respect. One thing we do pride ourselves on is we do this without prejudice or question. I'm getting mixed reports as I go around Bournemouth about whether homelessness is on the rise or the decrease. Apparently there were more people visibly on the streets a few years ago, but is, is that the full story of the problem? Uh, I would say that the problem is rising exponentially at this moment in time. And we're dealing with people that shouldn't generally be using our services, but haven't to. We're dealing with people that, out, not you know, we've got pensioners coming using our street kitchens because the services aren't there for the pensioners. It's more people And they've for paid track. for these services yeah. all, their all their lives. A pension isn't a benefit, it's something that they've paid for and they're, and they're entitled to, yeah. you know. It's just... The poor people that suffer every time and the services that get removed. We're supposed to be one of the biggest economic countries in the world and we treat our own natural people like shit. Our standing as one of the powerhouses of the world is definitely changing and you can see that all around us today. Yeah, I don't think that there's enough support or services for the homeless and there's certainly not, not a clear understanding of what homelessness is. What you get is prejudged. Um, you're a junkie, you're an addict. And what I found, because I've been doing this for a long time now, is that the biggest cause of homelessness is relationship breakdowns, family breakdowns. The males usually throw out the family home and let to the friend for themselves. When that happens, generally they'll start to lose a job, they lose their confidence, they'll spiral, then they'll then they'll start jumping around with a crew and they'll go into bad habits. Um, I understand the drink, I've been homeless myself. Um, the drink in the winter months is, is sometimes the only reason you can get your head down. You know, you have to numb yourself to get asleep on the night. One of the reasons I make these films is because I like to give um, people to understand that every homeless person is a person. There's a yes, human absolutely. story, there's a human narrative. These days, especially with the cost of living crisis, people are closer to that Much than closer. they realise. When you're paying half of your salary for your rented accommodation, it's, it's just fundamentally wrong. Not yeah. just is the system broken, but the safety nets yeah. are just smashed to bits. They've been chopped up. So is there any way that the people that watch the video can donate food or help uh, We Are Humans in any way? Yes, um, we're a registered charity now. We became a registered charity early on in the year. We're trying to purchase the building that we're in because the landlord's got it up for sale. Um, so that's our biggest challenge at the minute, trying to raise £125,000 to secure the future of what we do way past my lifetime. You know, because I won't be here forever, and I want to make sure that Pass even, the legacy on. even when I'm kindness. gone, this this carries on. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, is there a website? Or um, like a we Facebook have a website. Page? We are humans. At out, we are humans. One at outlook.com. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll get you some paraphernalia. Yeah, I can in a put minute. all uh, link we in the description a, below the video. We so have people a charity bank it. account as well where you can donate money. Yeah. So if you pass me the details on for that, yeah. and I'll put all that in the. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll pop all the details in the, in the description below the video. Um, and we're just, we're just here to serve people because it seems like nobody else gives us yet. You can see some of the amazing, compassionate work that Andy's doing there at We Are Humans. So if you can, folks, if you're that way inclined, then um, please do think about supporting that organisation in any way that you can. Yeah, I sleep here. Yeah. And it's fucking cold. Do they turf you out often? Like, or do yeah, they I can out? do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm still wet from last night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my bed is soaking wet, and yeah, people just don't realise, mate. They just don't fucking realise. Yeah. Is there anything that you say to people that watch the videos about how. Give us a chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't tell us all the same brush. Don't, don't, don't judge us before you get to know us, you know what I mean? We're not all bad people, you know what I mean? So, as the sun starts to set on my visit to Bournemouth, what are my conclusions? Well, obviously, this is a town 
that has quite a complicated divide in its society. There are some pockets of extreme wealth and we've seen those in sandbanks, but there are also some huge expensive properties and people living very well in Bournemouth itself. But then, as we've seen and we've met some of the people who are living on the streets and suffering from acute poverty. Also, very rough around the edges, Boscombe, but seems to have a good community vibe, although the people there say there are a lot of problems with drugs, with crime. Have I enjoyed my visit here? Absolutely, an incredibly beautiful natural place. But with it and with the size of it, a lot of big city, big town problems that take the shine off Bournemouth a little bit. Until next time, folks.